Welcome to the very first episode of Tech Doctor TV. Uh, my name is Scott and this is a, a new uh, YouTube channel and uh, my, uh, I run a business called uh, The Tech Doctor, funnily enough, and I just thought I'd start up a, a program which will show some, uh, some different things like uh, we might have some builds, we might have some repairs, some troubleshooting, uh, review, uh, might have the occasional rant, uh, it's a bit of an open-ended thing, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, but anyway, um, up uh, initially, let me just apologise in advance if I do drop the occasional um, F-bomb, because I am known to do that, and particularly when I'm working on some projects, they tend to, you know, get under your skin. But anyway, I'm not going to carry on too much about that, because we're all grown-ups here, and if you're not, then, well, it's not going to get too, too bad. Uh, so I thought today um, we might uh, first start off with a, a quick overview of a new case uh, followed by a build. So what I'm doing is um, I'm going to rebuild my media server and I had two machines set up. One was a media server uh, for Plex, uh, etc. And the other machine was, um, its primary duty was data recovery. So I might get a client's hard drive, so we'll plug it into that and run the uh, what we call um, first level tools to try and recover data. So there's no, um, it's, not a, it's not a clean room or anything like that. That's the next step, which I don't do, because uh, who can afford $100,000 for a clean room? Not me. So I thought taking up a lot of space, uh, and they're both getting a little bit uh, on in terms of um, specs, they're getting a bit old. And so I thought, why not combine the two into one? Because uh, the media server just sits there 24 seven there's no reason why the machine can't be doing data recovery at the same time because let's face it, streaming media to uh, various uh, devices such as tellies is not going to be that taxing. Um, so I've, I've put together a, um, a decent machine. It's a, it's a 12th gen i5 CPU. Um, oh no, I think it's a B660M uh, motherboard. Um, 16 gig of RAM because why not? And um, a lot of hard drives. Uh, most of the hard drives, uh, e excepting the boot drive, which is a brand new SSD, uh, all the other drives are coming across from the previous builds. And I think in total is about, I don't know, 23 terabytes. But because of the way they are, there's, uh, there's eight hard drives. So I needed a case that was going to accommodate eight hard drives. Um, and in this day and age of RGB, which, I mean, let's face it, RGB is great, I love it. Um, it's not necessary uh, for this kind of thing. And what the RGB design tends to do is that it's, it's shiny at the expense of, um, uh, of you know, storage uh, or versatility, if you like. So I did a bit of research and I, I, I found a case which uh, ticks all the boxes for me. It's got, um, it's got front access uh, and uh, to eight hard drives, I think it is at the front, and they're all hot swappable, uh, which is really cool, um, because I'm in the space of we're gonna have a hard drive go down once in a while, so you can just pull it out, um, you know, clone it if you, if you still can, uh, and put the new one back in and away you go. Uh, now the other limitation I faced, of course, was finding a motherboard that supported that many connections, which um, quite frankly, they're, they're, there's not. I mean, they're, there are, but uh, for your general purpose motherboards, not, not easy to find. You're generally going to find four as, as a typical amount. Uh, you might get lucky on some and get uh, up to eight, uh, but generally six is where it's going to top out um, in, the, in the consumer uh, realm. And this is where we're looking because with the media server, we don't want it to be like massively expensive. You're going to spend the money on the hard drives, obviously, and eventually I'll upgrade all these to larger capacity, because uh, some of them are getting on a bit. Uh, I will admit, there, I think there's one in there that's been going, oh, I don't know, um, eight years maybe, uh, but it's still reporting okay. And best practice obviously is you, you wanna have uh, backup of this stuff. But the way I look at it is like, well, I've got all the original Blu-rays and that there. So yes, as tedious as it would be, I could just re-rip them. Um, and besides, I'm sure if I went through there'd probably be at least 50% of the stuff on there I'm not gonna watch again, you know. You, 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 you put a movie on, you go, why don't I watch that? But I haven't got around to deleting it, but anyway. 
enough of that. Uh, so what we're working with today is I might, uh, oh, you can see it, but I will switch to a different camera. Uh, we'll go to the wider angle. There we go. Um, and so we've got the Silverstone CS380. Uh, so you can see it's a flexible eight bay compact NAS tower. Blah. Um, it's, um, I think it cost me 275 bucks. Uh, so it's not the cheapest of cases, but um, there are some features which kind of do justify the cost. So I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna move that box for one thing, uh, which is there so you can see what's going on. And then I'll open the case up. So box out of the way, whoops. Just ignore that crash. Kind of forgot that was there. All right, we're gonna need him at some point. There we go. All right, sorry about that crash. I forgot that was there. So anyway, uh, we can see this pretty well. Yep, I'll get some uh, closer up, close up shots uh, of certain things so we can see them. But if you, you look at it, you can see it's a, it's a fairly nondescript case. Like it's, it doesn't jump out and sort of say, hey, look at me, I've got all these lights and whatever. It's, it's in my view, it's purely functional. Um, it's got a nice little chrome strip, just rid of that plastic, so it's a little bit nicer. So we'll take the side panels off. We'll have a quick look inside. It has um, captive screws uh, on the thing, so you're not going to drop your screws and think, well, they're gone forever, uh, which happens. So while they can be a little bit trickier to get realign them, they are quite good. Right, so a brief look at the inside. You can see there's, there's not a huge amount to it, but what's really interesting, I'm just gonna switch cameras and just zoom in. Again, I'll put an all, um, a closer up shot of this. Just see if we can. It's a bit hard to see from over there, but I'll show you. It's got, down the back here, it's got its own little connection panel. So basically you, you're hot plugging all your hard drives in and then from there, there's a connection panel on the back. Now on the back you've got, uh, what is it? One, two, three SATA power connectors plus a four pin Molex connector. Now the, the instruction book says don't use it, use the, the SATA connectors, don't use them all off one, off one rail um, because you can run them in line when you're just running hard drives, but because this is powering up to eight drives off, off essentially four connectors using separate connectors. So um, I would say, you know, two off one and then one off another one and then a separate Molex, probably gonna be okay. Uh, you've got a couple of fans on the side there. Nice big, uh, they look like 140 mils. Uh, and they'll be blowing directly onto the, onto the hard drive to keep them nice and cool, which is really good. Uh, and there's a couple of fan connectors on this back panel as well. What you will see on there is remembering we've got eight bays, but there's actually 16 SATA connectors. Now you think, hmm? All you need, if you're using standard SATA drives, which most of us are going to be, um, you just use the, the right-hand side of SATA connectors. That's all you need to use. The other ones are if, you, if you're using SAS drives. Um, so they'll, they'll need the extra bandwidth or whatever. Uh, so you don't worry about them. Um, I mean, if you're gonna use them, happy days, but you don't need them otherwise. A um, Couple of uh, little grommets on the side here. For, that's kind of, that's a bit old school uh, for the old water cooling setups. Let me just grab the bag of goodies. Of course, here's uh, all your usual cables. Uh, I'm just seeing if there is anywhere which I can mount a SSD because I would prefer to keep one of these bays clear for swapping in and out data recovery drives. Um, so um, I'm not seeing one, so I'm probably gonna have to, uh, I may have to retrofit that into one of the, you know, DVD drive bays or something. Um, because that's just the motherboard connectors there, but that's that's not an issue. I've got I've got four SATA ports on the board, main board, and I also have this, 
which is a, another Silverstone product, uh, just by not, not intentionally plugging Silverstone. I mean, I like them as a brand, but they're not paying me for this at all. Um, but I certainly welcome sponsorship. Um, this is a six port SATA uh, expansion card. Uh, now it's non-RAID, so it's just, you know, JBOD or just a bunch of discs. And uh, that's got six ports, coupled with that four, so it gives me 10 ports. Uh, so I'll still have a couple free, uh, which is grand. So in the, in, the little, in the little baggie, we've got the usual things. Got some teeny tiny cables, which are next to useless. Um, but they might come in handy. The screws, lots and lots of screws. They give you about, I don't know, 59. Anyway, you need about 16. Uh, and standoffs and, you know, Nothing exciting, and of course, a couple of keys. Now I might be liking this because it's just me and my wife and the and the three dogs, and um, the dogs. Well, the last time the dogs got into the media server, uh, well, it was never because they haven't got opposable thumbs. So I'll just move that up there. So yep, key in the side. Unlock. There we go, and there is our. Cases. Now, very helpfully, I've gone and labelled all my hard drives uh, on the front what they are, and only now discovering that we've got a thing there, so I'll have to move them as we progress. But anyway, what do you do? Uh, now, it doesn't look like these are tool free, so the, I, that's a little bit disappointing um, considering they're all hot swap. The idea of hot swap being you can do it nice and quick, so the fact that you have to unscrew each hard drive and then re screw it in. It's going to be a bit of a pain, but hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully, that won't have to happen too often. Uh, but that aside, uh, it's not a not a huge deal. Click this one is a little bit flimsy. Yep, and they just plug straight in when you send it back. So um, build quality, I'd say, is pretty is pretty good. Uh, it's 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 plastic uh, with your typical um, thin steel insides and everything. There's nothing, there's nothing overly wow about the case. Um, it's, fun it's, it's functional. It's going to do its job um, and it's not going to weigh a lot. This doesn't weigh a lot, um, empty that is, uh, of, which is good because it's going to weigh a, a bit more when you've got all those hard drives in. So I think, oh yeah, and you've got your, in, your instruction book and what have you. Uh, so I think now that we've done that, I, I, I would recommend this case. Um, there's not a lot to say about it, to be quite honest. It's, it's black, it's got a shiny bit down the front, um, and it comes with the two 140 fans and the one, I think it's a 140 at the back as well. Um, yeah, so you've got three fans that it comes with, which is pretty good. Uh, so uh, hopefully it's not going to be you know, overly loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the build. Um, so we might just check which camera we're on. I think this is the wide angle. I don't want that. No, I don't want that. We'll stick with the other one. There we go. And we'll just angle it a little bit so we can see up there. And we're not going to be getting out close with the with the build because I mean most of us know how to build a, a PC pretty easily. There's nothing you know, overly complicated about this. Uh, I'll explain as I go. Um, yeah, at this at this point, early in production, I've only got the one camera, um, which is my phone, uh, but it's got a it's got a good camera, so I'm happy with it. So I'm going to hoik over there, and um, uh, we'll get the build going. I've already attached the CPU and the and the cooler and the RAM and that to the motherboard, purely because I've been using it. Um, out of uh, on a test bench uh, in the interim until this case got hit because the bloody courier took forever to get it to me. So got to blame someone. So we'll flip this over. We'll just get them out of the way for the time being. Bring this down. I might even see if I can zoom that camera in a little bit. Seeing we've got um, the function to do so. When we come, just so I'm not so far in the distance. Now we'll just have to see that I haven't cut my own head off. 
because that wouldn't be great. Uh, I'll just angle it up a bit. Ah, uh, production. Tilt. There we go. So we should be able to see the thing and see me because uh, yeah, that'll do. All right, I'm happy with that. So we'll get them out of the way. Put this light up a bit higher because it's the only problem here is, is the lighting is, is not great. But, you know, you work with what you've got. That'll do. All right, so we need the back plate. Here is the box. Ah, I was looking for them. Wi-Fi, probably not gonna need that because I'm gonna hardwire it. And I'm not using an M.2 drive because I'm sure you're probably aware that with um, a, a lot of motherboards, once you use an M.2 drive, that can, um, if you can hear that in the background, that's my phone ringing, but you probably can't because I've got the mic here. Just excuse me one sec. And they've hung up. All right, that's okay. So as I was saying, if you're using uh, an M.2 drive, that can often um, render one of the, uh, of the SATA ports um, inoperable, which is not ideal for what we're doing. And what, what we're doing with the machine, we don't need the speed of the M.2 drive, uh, purely because, I mean, it's, as I said, it's, it's gonna be always on and it's going to be, uh, for its duties, a standard SSD is going to be plenty fast enough. So I'll put my screws over here. Now, where did they stand off, Sky? Put him over there. Stand off. So, I'll screw them by hand and then I'll tighten them. Alright, so we've got MATX. So, we want to go up one up there. So yeah, this case will take a full ATX board uh, if you if you so desire. Um, I had a full ATX board. Uh, it was a an AM4, and um, it was it was a gigabyte um, Aorus or Aorus, however you say it. Stupid bloody spelling. Uh, anyway, I had that, and I had a. A Ryzen 3 3400? 3100. Can't entirely remember. Uh, and I thought, well, you know what? Let's, I'll use that because, uh, you know, waste not, want not. So I put it all together and it was going nicely. And then all of a sudden it just started blue screening. I was like, hmm, okay. So I uh, tested the RAM and then the, uh, the test aborted because there was too many, too many errors. It was well over a thousand. Okay, I'll get some more RAM. So I bought some more RAM uh, and plugged it in and happy days for a few days. And then all of a sudden it started uh, acting weird and crazy again. And then I, I, I woke up the next day and I came out and the motherboard was, was blinking in a really strange way. And so I powered it down thinking I'll just power it back up. Um, but no. Didn't power back up. I was like, oh, okay. So I immediately thought, well, the motherboard must be must be gone. I tried different power supplies. Um, you know, I tried removing, um, you know, taking the RAM off. I mean, I knew it wasn't the RAM because it was brand new and I, and I tested it, but uh, something just wasn't going. Nothing I could do. And then all of a sudden, nothing. No power to the motherboard. Um, so I tried three power supplies, all the same. So Logic says, mm, motherboard must be... Must be done. Uh, so I'll pop down to the local uh, computer place and I bought another motherboard. Uh, brought it home, plugged it all in, and I'll be bugging. Nothing. It didn't work again. And I was like, what is going on? This does make, doesn't make any sense. Um, so that did the same sort of test. But back to the shop I went and I'm thinking, well, we've got a DOA, which, you know, it happens. And, um, you know, they, they confirmed it and they said, yep, no worries. 
So we grabbed another board. And, and they said, while well, I was there, they said, oh, do you want to chuck your stuff on there while, we, while you're here? And I said, oh yeah, save me some time. So they chucked everything on and it wouldn't power up. And they, they were scratching their head, they're going, what? And I was thinking, what the hell's going on? And so by process of elimination, we popped the CPU out. We said, let's just try it completely naked, see if we can just get some power. Pop the CPU out, boom, got power to the board. Okay, so we put the CPU, took the CPU out, of, uh, left it out, sorry, and tried the, the, the previous board, fine. So therefore, my board that I was using at home was most likely all right as well. The bloody CPU had just died. It, it had gone from being fine to all of a sudden not wanting to play the game anymore. So I thought, right, that's it. I've had enough of this, so I just bought a new the new i5 and uh, also the uh, the i5 uh, CPU and the B660 uh, motherboard. I thought, bugger it, I'm just gonna um, go new on everything because that way I know I'm not gonna have any issues. Um, and I've still got this board sitting there looking at me like an idiot. Maybe one day I'll get a, I don't know, I'll get another Ryzen, I'll get a Ryzen 5 or, or something because I've updated the BIOS so it's it can take the um the fifth fifth generation of Ryzen's so you know something to uh something to ponder but I spent enough money for now All right, so I got them on uh it's my trusty little Ozito thing put it down to the, to the lower setting so you've got your um it won't over tighten. Always use caution though. You know, some people say, oh, you should only hand tighten with the thing, but I've been doing this a long time and it's all good. Uh, so now we get this bloody cable out of the way. Stop, stop falling down. So yeah, I'm in uh, um, tropical North Queensland, uh, Townsville. And only recently moved back here. We were, I've lived here before, uh, but that was with, uh, with my wife, who I'm still obviously with, uh, but we moved down to the Gold Coast for five years. We decided, because um, that's my home territory, my home turf. So we, uh, we chuffed down to the Gold Coast for five years and then we, um, lost our minds briefly for 18 months and decided to move to Tasmania um, where we discovered that the clothes that we had, which we thought were cold weather clothes, <laughs> yeah, not even close. They were, let's put it this way, Queensland winter clothes, uh, Tasmanian summer clothes. So we had to run out fairly quickly and get us some uh, actual winter clothes like uh, thermals and and what have you so consequently uh, our uh, our skin didn't really see the sun for that 18 months and I pretty much well any 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 se uh, semblance of a tan that I may have had <laughs> long disappeared and I like to think what well, I don't like to think it's it's pretty true uh, I was that white that you could see me from space. Excuse me two secs. Oh, 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 oh. I wish I'd standardize these bloody things. Do you, no, see so you're too small. All right, so which ones do you want for your motherboard? See, let's say a eight times out of 10. It's the one particular size that fits the standoffs. Um, this time, no, standoffs are a bit bigger. So that's all right. That's why they give us a selection and that's why I have about 400,000 screws sitting around. But uh, yeah, so we moved to Tasmania, spent two winters there. Uh, 
and realized that cold weather is more of a novelty and more fun when you're visiting. When you're living there, not so much fun. So now we've come back to Townsville and I'm not gonna lie, it's hot. The humidity is hideous um, at this time of year, but that's what we've got air conditioning for. And air conditioning is cheaper to run than uh, gas central heating, I can tell you. <sighs> so, just pop these in. Access. Access into the case is a little bit restrictive up the top end here. You've got to sort of angle it in. I mean, I could use a screwdriver and I will for this. I will for this next screw because it's just too much of a, an angle. But a um, magnetized screwdriver is definitely the go. Oh, I've really got to get an overhead light just here. I mean, I've got one, but I've just got to organize myself. Go in. There we go. All right, so that's that. So now we'll just do the others and then we'll be done with that. And then we'll do the fun job of cabling and what have you. So yeah, as I said, this is a, this is a new venture. Uh, I, run a, I run a business here, like a, it's a mobile technician. Um, I've got my workshop I'm in obviously at the moment, but I go out and see clients. I've got some clients uh, down the Gold Coast, down in Tasmania with, you know, thanks to remote um, connections and what have you. Uh, we can look after all that. And uh, I just thought, well, what else can I, what can I do that, um, you know, maybe pass on some helpful hints or tips? And I thought, well, I don't mind being in front of a camera, I suppose. And I always talk to myself, so I figure, well, why not do it? And uh, on a YouTube channel, um, the YouTube, as they say. Okay. So as I said, yes, it's new. Um, you know, there's certainly no sponsors or anything in place yet. Um, you know, maybe that will change one day. We can only we can only hope. Um, but until then, that's all good. So you know, I have. Uh, Things like, you know, busted laptop screens come through, so I'll film them. Um, I may just do a uh, just do a review here and there. Um, as you know, We'll just see what happens. And I'll, I'll try and do it with some regularity, but, you know, I've got to find time to edit and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm. Just going to stand this up. I'm just trying to find... Let's have a look here. So, in terms of uh, cable management you're not going to have a lot of options this is not going to be the prettiest in terms of cable management because it just doesn't have a lot this motherboard it doesn't have a fan header up near the cpu cooler where i'm used to it so i'm going to have to go down the down the bottom somewhere all the way across there i might go all the way across there it's probably easiest i mean it's going to be closed up i'm going to try and keep the cables as neat as possible, but it's not going to be like you would do with a gaming build because it's a solid case. Um, but for, for optimal airflow and that kind of stuff, you still want to try and keep them um, you know, relatively neat and not all bunched up and you know, getting in the way. Just gonna find where we can connect this guy to. Where'd that fan header go? There he is. Alright, so we'll pop the fan header on. Okay. So we'll just do that. Route that down through there. Hook him under there. So you'd normally I like to run the power power, the the like the, the main 12 volt cable behind uh, the case. In the instructions it's saying you shouldn't do that with this one. I don't know, if I can I will. Um, I mean, there is the, op the option to pass them through, but there's not a lot of option to feed them back up over the motherboard. Um, 
So again, it's not an overly complex build, so I'm not gonna be worrying myself too much about it. So before I put the power supply in, we'll get these annoying ones out of the way, this USB 3. I really don't like the USB 3 uh, connection. I don't know if you can see that too well. You know, the one that connects into the, it's usually blue or the, or the plug's blue. Um, I've had a few cases where it's been plugged into the motherboard and you've gone to work it out uh, and it's just ripped the entire thing off the motherboard, which is not ideal. So I'm very, very uh, cautious of that now because I don't want that to happen. As I'm sure you can understand. And you have to double, always double it back on itself and it's always in the bloody way of everything. In fact, it can get stuffed for the moment. Let's have a look. Are you going to be in the way there? Yeah, yeah you are. All right, you can wait till, it, wait till the end. Uh, and HD audio, kind of irrelevant because I'm not going to be needing it, but I'll plug it in anyway, just because it's there. So we just find him. He's always up the back here. Flip them upside down. And the other thing I wish they'd standardise is the um, bloody RGB headers. You've got your rainbow and then you've just got the standard RGB. And I had a, a, a build recently where the case came with its own fans. Will you just go on? And... Um, the motherboard did not support that particular standard. They said it, like, it supported a bunch of them, but but not that one. And um, I'm struggling with this audio plug, which is ridiculous. So I had to buy a, a, an adapter. There we go, just to enable the um, the RGB on the fans to work, which was you know really annoying. And then I had to go into the BIOS and fiddle with the fans because using that just, boom, the fans were all just going full on. Uh, and it was really annoyingly loud. Um, so I just had to set them to PWM rather than voltage. And they were happy. But still, yeah. Point of my story, standardize the bloody things. And standardize these little things. You know, give us a... Make them a solid big thing that you can boom. Filthy little bastards they are. Ah, right, here we go. Power switch. You go there. I'll call you, and we'll say two o'clock. Um, where's the positive? So you only need to figure out the positive polarity uh, for the um, hard drive activity light and the power LED. Uh, the others, uh, like the reset switch and the power switch, they don't have a polarity because they're reversible because um, you're basically just closing the circuit for that to work. So it's either, it's either closed or it's open. So it doesn't matter, but it's just the, uh, the, the lights that you've got to line up, the, the positive and negative. Um, and you do it enough, you, you remember where they are that's one thing that's standard is, you know, your power button is always in the same spot. But oh, I need tiny little fingers to do this. And a new set of eyeballs that work properly wouldn't go astray either. Don't get old kitties. And what's that? The reset switch. In you go. In you go. There we go. All right, so I'll just grab some cable ties because I'm going to tie them off. Keep them neat. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Highly recommend buying these in bulk because, um, you know, they're a bit cheaper. And you will go through a lot of them. A lot, a lot. So I'm just going to cable them together just because they get so messy and they're just... They're my least favourite cables. I don't care if I hurt their feelings. It's funny, that's probably the one thing that, one of the few things that just has not changed since, um, you know, in a long, long time. 
the um, probably back in I remember when I started working on computers back in 2000 2001 thereabouts um, everything else was different but they still had these these things and they were just as annoying back then as they are now and when you go and clipping your cables for the love of God just make sure you don't pinch a cable and snip it because well you'll cry let me swear a little bit I know I've done it all right where can we uh, connect this to so there's not a lot of cable management options so you're just gonna have to just make do with what you can but I will say in the uh, side of the case there's a there's a uh, like a bulge if you like which um, will help to accommodate some cables so I'm used to seeing cases like gaming cases that have all the the clips and everything all up the sides so that you can attach things to get off um, so yeah it's a it would have been a nice inclusion but uh, you know your cabling isn't on display here so it's just make it however you can keep them neat and uh, you know organized all right snippy snippy Yeah, don't snip your finger, because you will know about it. Oh boy, you will know about it. All right, and I might just give them a, a cable over here like that. Could use a third pair of hands here, or a second pair of hands. Third hand, second pair of hands. Actually, well, Symmetry purposes, I think a second pair of hands would probably look less freaky. Where would your third hand come from if you only had a third hand? Out of your head? I don't know, man. All right, so they're, they're fairly neat. Like, there's not a lot else you can really do. You can just sort of just, you know, clip them up. Uh, you, you can wait. You're done. So I'll plug these fans in for. Um, so these fans on the side, remembering they're going to go onto the back plane of where the uh, the hard drives connect. Um, we've got we got. There we go there and there. So this is probably where, why you're paying the extra money for the case because you've got this uh, this back plane. Uh, which is looking after all the hard drives, so you know to enable the hot swap. And yeah, it's it's not the most overly available case, I will say. I had to do a bit of searching for it, um, but it's certainly got the best um, options for me. So, what do we do now? Got that cabling done, this is gonna wait. We have to, let's put that card in, eh? And it just runs off your PCIe slot, just your PCIe times one. Um, it does come with a low profile bracket, so if you've got a low profile machine, um, you know, you're, 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 um, you're covered. Oh, excuse me. Okay, and here we go. Doesn't look like much. Anyway, uh, where will we put it? Where's it the least in the way? Let's put it, uh, let's put it there. So we'll just line up that back plate. You've got to come off, mister. Reversey, so it's you. Oh, good, these just slide out. I don't like the ones where you've got to twist them and, you know, mm -mm -mm, to break them off. Not a lot of fun. So you just... Oh, okay. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad. It's kind of worked out for the best because this uh, caught me out. It's not actually a PCIe uh, times one. It's a, 
or X1, whatever you want to call it, it actually has to go in your full size PCIe 16 slot because the connection is bigger than the X1. Um, so it was actually quite fortuitous the way it worked out with my previous things because the, um, the previous board that I had, the uh, Aorus, um, it didn't have the facilities for running onboard um, graphics. So, although it did have a second, uh, it did have a second uh, PCIe uh, full size slot, so it's kind of irrelevant. But yeah, if I had to run a graphics card off this machine, I would have been, I would have been buggered. So, lesson: don't always take things for granted because you might be wrong. Everyone's allowed to be wrong once in a while. So my dad used to say, I was wrong once, back in 1974. I would have been worried if he'd said 1971, the year I was born, would have made me feel a little bit, un <laughs> a bit uneasy. But he was just doing the usual dad humour, as dads do. So, I hope everyone out there is having a, uh, you know, a good start to this to this new year after we've had a, a few, well, what do we call them? Strange? Ridiculous? I don't know, whatever they were, I hope this year is going well for you. It's going all right for me. I mean, you know, moving towns does mean you have to sort of start business going again, but um, eh. it is what it is. So here's a ton of SATA cables, which I've prepared earlier. So we'll move him, get these cable off cuts out of the way. Uh, right, now. I'm going to run, what do we got? We got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got 10 SATA ports and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm not going to use them because they're a bit of a pain to get to. All right, that's fine. So I need to leave one free for L boot. Who's that email from? Nothing. All right, so that will be the boot drive. Now we're gonna figure out where we can attach him because there's literally nowhere to put it. Bit disappointing. I mean, you can fit him into the hot swap base, don't get me wrong, but uh, because uh, if I do that, I won't have a free slot to be able to do uh, drive recovery uh, so I'd like to keep let's say the top slot for free um, that's an interesting thing let's have a look do any of those things line up you never know you like one yeah that's no good to me oh I could possibly line them up yeah, all right, that might work. So we'll leave that till the end. But that SATA port is for that. Now, that's not going to be any good for that one. I need a straight one. Okay, let's go. So I can use the uh, the right angle ones on uh, on this back plane. It's not a not a big deal. Just trying to uh, think ahead of how I'm going to uh, how I'm going to sort them out of like the cables because there's going to be there's going to be a few of them. All right, that one can be for the boot. So you can stick out there. Um, 
Um, so yeah, so that'll be done recovery. Move this around so I've got more light. So yeah, again, it's the no, it's the uh, the right hand side SATA port you'll be using if you're just using standard SATA drives. I would recommend actually starting from the bottom and working your way up if you're using these angled connectors. Actually, I'm going to use those ones for the expansion card because it'll be easier. Of course, I have a few of them. More than I kind of realised. There we go, there's a straight but Don't you fall off. Don't you do it. Alright, so you can go in... Clickety click. Don't come big. And there. I said don't fall. But did you listen? You did not. Click. So uh, having uh, pre-built this machine means I'll obviously set all the software up so there we basically once I put it in it'll be a case of uh, plugging it in and hoping everything fires up and then rebuilding the, uh, the Plex server side of things. is getting a little bit a little bit uh, fiddly I will say but uh, look I've seen worse certainly click in there and click in there when did that happen? It's lunchtime. Uh, we've got one, two, three more to go. Stop it. One, two, go. Um. Hang on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've already got that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I must be putting eight drives in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, I have, yeah, yeah. Eight drives in with nine connections. The ninth being, obviously, um, for that hot swap. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this one is going to have to go into one of these. Bit of a two of the SATA ports, you know, they're on the the the. Well, when I say right angle, I don't mean the correct angle. I mean, you know, they're, they're right angle, uh, so they're pain in the. Oh, am I going to get to it? A right pain to get to. Let's try. Get you. There we go. Now we're going to have to pass this one up through here and do it a weird way. Right, well, there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to put him on the bottom. There you go. 
and one more which will be that and that populates all but one of the SATA ports click clack front and back and we're going to need to keep them away from there that's a bit of a not a concern but a bit of a an annoyance the uh, SATA cables are could interfere with the CPU fan so I'm going to cable them up and just see if I can keep that away and hope that gravity will kind of help there I'm just out oh, there we go cool 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 able to manipulate them into place snip snip snippy Beep. right so what do we need now I need a power supply I've got that outside the door haven't I that's all right Let's see if we can do anything to arrange these in a somewhat respectable fashion. I feel as though it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I can get some organisation happening. As I said, it's not going to be, it's not something you're going to enter in as a visually appealing internals, but you want it to be so it's not a complete and utter disaster bearing in mind you know you might have to get in there and tinker at some point in the future so you don't want the cable the cable um, management to be so locked down that it's going to be really difficult to work on in the future given that the probability of drive swapping out is going to happen that's easy because of the front but there may be there may be an occasion where you need to Swap out a SATA cable. Um, all right, I'll just grab the hard uh, power supply. Come out here. Where did I put it? Over here in the kitchen bench. Where else would you put it? Gotta love this wireless mic. Hello, dogs. Okay. Hello. Do you want to come in? Come on. Watch out. You can't see them, but we've got two guests in here. We've got uh, Bruno, the Chihuahua, uh, or the Pokemon as we call him because he's, uh, he's hard to catch, and Polly, the mini Dachshund, a little resident German. And yes, they've decided being here in the air conditioning is probably a nicer option than where they were. All right, so, it's, Power supply screws, blues, thank you. What's particularly annoying is, you know, you can have a really nice and neat, and then when you add the, uh, the power supply, then all of the, uh, all the neatness, it just gets challenged, if you like, because, um, you know, we've got these big bulky cables. That, that's part of it. There we go, that other screw was a bit loose. Right, that's that. So, let's have a look and see what we can do if I was to run that through. I know, I know it, says, it suggests that you don't, but I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to run this up here because I think that will be fine. It's just it's too busy inside the case otherwise. Okay, so that's the main one. Now, the additional 12 volts of Roonies. Now that's not, that doesn't have the length to go outside, I don't believe. And even if it did, there's nowhere for it to go. Because again, there's nowhere at the back where we can run it up above the motherboard because the motherboard's hard up against the top pretty much. Um, certainly not a design flaw. Oversight maybe. I would prefer to see a nice little gap where you can just feed the cable through it because that uh, really does help with cable management. But uh, you can't have everything. Why not, I hear you say. Because we just can't. Come on. You know, you've got plugs, you know they fit. You know you're over it. Yet sometimes they just go, nah. Oh, there we go. See, I was just about to swear. And we will wrap that down the side there. All right, so now, what have we got in terms of uh, SATA and what have you? What am I doing with him again? Oh, yeah. So I've got one, two SATA rails. I don't need that. Yeah. That's just an extender I had, uh, a Molex to, to SATA, pop him there. So, over on his side again. This is a, this is a bit of a fiddly bit. Uh, where's that torch? Because the SATA connectors are at the well, in this orientation, they're on the bottom. Um, and they're behind a lot of the others. So I have to finagle my way in there. I'll try to shine that into the camera, sorry. All right. You on? You are. Nice. Where's the other one? Where is the bloody other one? All the way down there. Oh no, there's two of them down there. Right, 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 right. Okay. That's the way you want to play it. That's the way we'll play it. You two will go down here. Now these two are going to be interesting to get to can I do it it's tongue in the right position click at the click it reminds me uh, me saying click at the click I watched a movie the other day for the second time. Um, saw it a while ago when it first came out. Um, Killing Gunther. And it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It's one of his, not one of his first, but one, one of the, his post, post-governor um, movies. And um, he doesn't have a huge role in it. I mean, it's a decent enough movie. But the end of it, at the very, very end, during the credits, you get to hear Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, sing a country, not so much ballad, but uh, just like a country music song. And it is one of the funniest things you're going to hear Arnie doing. Honestly, the accent, um, do yourself a favour, do nothing else, just look that up, look up the, 
the um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's song from the closing credits of uh, Killing Gunther. Hilaire mouse. Uh, now we need a Molex. A Molex. How are we going to do him? Will we do that and tuck? Hate Molex connectors. Because they are notoriously difficult to clip in. Having said that, of course, it went straight in, didn't it? Alright, so we'll tuck them down. There's not a lot I can do with these, annoyingly. So it's just a case of popping them down there. It's looking a bit messy, but I really don't think there's much of another option. All right, now where's that? Oh God, how am I going to plug this bloody thing in? USB three. Move, move. Okay, so you go straight down the front. Is that in? I believe so. Alright. I still haven't figured out what I'm doing with this SSD. Getting that USB 3 plug in wasn't as difficult as I was fearing. That said, it didn't need to be that tight. It's, it's, if I had a complaint about this um, case, as I would like to see it maybe just a little bit longer, a deeper I should say, because that way bit more clearance between the back plane of the um, hot swap bay and the edge of the motherboard because uh, it's uh, it's getting pretty tight there and you know it's kind of like I want this to work first time I don't want there to be any what's going on I don't want to go back in here if I don't have to but okay so the boot drive is the last thing I'm going to worry about I'll stand this up bit big for the old lazy Susan, but it's all right. I don't know if you can see, you know, it's not looking too bad in there, considering that you've got uh, nine SATA cables, plus the power stuff, um, and I had to route some of the uh, cables through the front of the case. So now, the kind of tedious task of the case, the, uh, them, the storage things, hard drives. Now, which screws are we going to use for that? I'm going to do one quick test one over here, and then I will, I might even come back over here and sit down. Excuse me, Polly. Now, we're just using the standard screws. Yes, we will for that. All right. So, pop him there. Here are a stack of hard drives. So, get those screws and we'll do it over here. Where's Bruno? Oh, there he is. Hey, Bruno. All right, I'm going to have to get my other connection, not my connection, my box of screws <sighs> all right uh, everyone should have a box of these all right now <sighs> we'll flick cameras again to the other one uh no no i don't want that one i want that's too wide angle I want the other one, but unzoom it. How about we do that? Weak, too much. That'll do. All right. So we'll try not to uh, dwell on this bit for too long. Let me just find the screwdriver. There we go.
don't touch the keyboard while you're recording because you might push something you don't want to push. Wouldn't mind a bit of extra room, I have to say. Whatever you do, do not drop your container of screws on the floor because, yeah. All right. So, yeah, as I said, the labels, uh, you can label the front of the, uh, the drive thing, which is, uh, which is cool. And I've already made these labels. I won't be too uh, OCD. Ta-da! Obviously, you go <coughs> back in, back end in first. Mm. Uh, so uh, the Phoenix Suns. Oh, three points ahead of Brooklyn. With Eleven seconds to go. Come on, Suns, you can do it. All right. So yeah, just your standard, um, standard uh, screws. Little uh, those ones to put your drives in and uh, yeah, use all four. I mean, it's tempting in some situations just to use two, like diagonally opposite each other. But uh, yeah, when it's, when it's in this, I, I'd say use four. It only takes an extra 10 seconds or whatever. And what else are you going to do with these screws anyway, hey? I suppose I could use the electric. All right, so that's test bench. So that actually goes, oh yeah, no, that can go down the bottom. So the theory being is you just go, and that's now connected. Of course, we'll be testing that, won't we? I've got a, uh, a mix of drives here. I've got uh, a uh, Barracuda, um, what was that? Uh, Iron Wolf, I think it was. Yep, Iron Wolf, four terabyte. This is just a uh, four terabyte Barracuda. Um, I think the Iron Wolves were on special. So I thought, yeah, I'll have me one of those. Fours are the biggest I've got in this machine. <clears throat> Whenever I need to replace one, I'll probably look at, you know, a minimum of six. I mean, it just it depends on the pricing because, you know, as we know, um, hard drive pricing, the cost of hard drives has uh, been in a con consistent state of flux, but it's always coming down. I remember back when I first started on computers, my first, well, my first real computer was a, an Amstrad CPC 6128. It had a whole 64, no, sorry, 128 kilobytes of RAM, which was just, well, it was insane back then. That was in 1989. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but it was a fun machine. It had a game, um, I'm pretty sure it was on that, system had the game head over heels maybe some of you have heard of it any you know, older older um older crowd like me um very cute game I do, I, i've got it today a modern version it's i mean graphically it's the same but they um the music isn't quite the same which is a bit sad but what can you do you can't go back in time but anyway i had that that was my first machine. And then I went to an Amiga. Uh, I actually had an Amiga 1000. And <clears throat> that was a lot of fun. Then I went to Amiga 500. Um, and then I went to an Amiga 1200. And that was my pride and joy. That had, uh, it came standard with two megabytes, megabytes of RAM. And uh, I got an upgrade kit for it, so I was able to get it up to 10 megabytes. And, and we were sort of like, what am I ever going to do with 10 megabytes of RAM? 
um, and we were able to run it at a, you know, a, a sufficiently high resolution, which I think, you know, very high back then was uh, uh, 1024 by 768, because, you know, back then 800 by 600 was considered pretty high. But anyway, I've got an external hard drive for it, 40 megabytes. And I think that cost me cost me something along the lines of oh, like I want to say three or four hundred dollars, which you know that's a lot back then in the uh, in the late eighties for a forty megabyte hard drive. When you consider uh, one file can easily be bigger than forty megabytes. And now we're talking in terabytes. Um, but now you can buy one terabyte drive for like 69 bucks. Crazy. I wonder when we'll see the first commercial um, petabyte. I know we've got a while to go, but I don't doubt that it's coming. All right, we know. Ah, okay, yeah. Had a screw shear off in this one at some point. This is just a um, one terabyte Western Digital Green. Uh, it's basically what I call my workbench, which is a throwback to the Amiga. That's what they call their operating system. So I, my disk where I just have random stuff. I hate that word random. Uh, I just call it workbench. Why aren't you going in? All right, well that's... That's a bit annoying. Why is that? Not going in. Is it ah, biting me? All right. What's going on there? So we've just had, it's not uh, lining up for some reason on this particular drive. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. So, what's your damn problem? Hmm? Try in a different uh, media. One, two, three, four. I'll try it up here. All right, well, that is kind of pissing me off. Just bear with me, see if we can figure out why this won't go in. Where's that torch? Ah, it's looking at me. I don't see any reason. I don't want to force it, obviously, but I'd like to know why. I'd like to know why it's being a shithead. Son of a bitch. Hmm. All right, let's think about this. It's the first one that's given us a drama like this. I mean, we're only
going to take the back ones off because these ones aren't really going to be going anywhere. Just, just trying to figure out if it's if it's a, an angle or, or what the hell's going on. These things, like they should just line up. There shouldn't be any any drama in terms of getting it to to fit. I mean, this isn't a crucial drive, but I'd like it to be in there. Get out of the way. It's not going to, because it's an asshole. All right, I'll put that to the side, and we'll see if I might have to replace it and clone it. It is kind of crucial because that's where the uh, the user files, such as uh, you know, downloads and documents and pictures and all that rubbish, are going. So I just wonder what else we got. We've got another green there. I hope it's not anything to do with the green drive being weird. Anyway, it's going to the side. We're going to try a different, try a different drive. So I'll just pop him in there for the moment. And okay, let's go media one. Good. I tell you what, if I if it's if it's a Western Digital thing, that just doesn't fit. I won't be happy. I will not be happy. Okay, media one. So this is a Western Digital Red for Terabatos. Hmm. All right, just concentrating on this, uh, on these holes. Yeah, it's at this point of the build when you know small, small things you know, they get you, and you and you're just thinking, oh, why do I do this? So, uh, the red's in, no worries at all. So this will be interesting. This is another green. Uh, and it was the one terabyte green that didn't want to go in. Yeah, it's odd because I've tried it in a couple of different slots. So you would think um, maybe it's it's the actual drive, but I mean they all come out of you know not a mould, but you know they're all identical. So I don't know, man. Hmm, that does tend to lift it up a little bit, doesn't it, on the on the tray? Half of what we do is just scratching our head, figuring it out, going, hmm, why is this doing this? Like that, for instance. Oh, I always find if you're going to put a screw in, don't try and put it, 
put it in where there's already a screw. It's not going to end very well. And yeah, a, a tool free, tool free uh, racks would have been a really good addition. So I am going to deduct a point for that. I haven't decided on my final score. Okay, me jar tool. Click, 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 click. All right, so, yep, so I want to try something else with workbench. Because being Yes. I don't know, I feel like I'm just going to be going down the same path. Let's have a look at this. It's not screwed in. Yeah, it won't go in. It just will not. Come back to it. Uh, media three. Back into the old sea gates. This is just a. This is an old one. It's only a, only a 5900 RPM, but that's not essential because it's just reading media. Um, I've got a date. Have I got a date? Date one four one three four. Uh, I think that means 2014. Ooh. He's getting on there. You know, if this was crucial data, these would have been replaced. But it's not crucial data. So, I'll get to them. I'll replace them one day. But for now, it ain't no biggie. Oh, we're nearly done. Except for this bloody, bloody, bloody. It really uh, it annoys me. Oh, what's going on? <sighs> so it looks like uh, LeBron James has got a good uh, good chance of uh, beating Kareem's record of all time scorer. 36 points in eight. And I'm sure his teammates will do whatever they can to help him get there. I'm staying out of the debate of the GOAT. I know what I think. And other people think what they want to think. He is a good player, I'll certainly say that. Still, to still be playing at 38, that's uh, pretty impressive. Anyway, sorry for the uh, extended time that this is taking. But it, it's good to see, you know, from your point of view, that what, uh, you know, what you have to, what it entails. And I suppose having something crop up that we can try and figure out. I mean, I might have another drive there that I can clone it onto. I hope the, uh, the screwdriver isn't too noisy in the mic. What's the output level saying? I think you can hear it, but I don't think it's, you know, overwhelming. All right, so that's them. Uh, that's for yeah, so this one this has come I don't know if I is it damaged or I don't know if I'd say it's damaged but it's yeah no it's damaged it's just got a warp on it like you know you can see 
there, like it's not, it's got an angle, or is it that one? That one. Yeah, so it just doesn't clip in. Sort of just slides there. <sighs> what are you going to do? Um, now, I feel that this needs to be going up a little bit. So I'm just going to see if I can find something to, you know, put in between the tray and the drive because, I mean, you can't, unfortunately, you can't just pop it in like this. No, you can't. All right, bear with me. Just a, oh, what have we got in here? Ah. What size is that? One terabyte. So I'm just going to quickly put this in because to be quite honest with you, I can't be bothered trying to get that one to fix. If it's not going to fix, I'm just going to quickly run off the clone and be done with it. So I'll just put two screws in there. I mean, it stands to reason that this will fit because that one didn't fit into any of the others. All right, so I need to, what I need to do is quickly test this drive, make sure it's not, because, because my testing tools are all on this machine, Well, not entirely true. I've got some stuff on this machine I'm recording on. Uh, so I'll uh, just need to grab a cable. Move these. I might even switch it over to my screen so you can so you can see. Um, I'll just minimise all that and. I'll double check and see if I've actually already. I do. All right, so where's that cable? Out here somewhere. Hi, that little boy. That's that's him. You okay? Hey. Oh. I'm gonna say hello. I'll go the other way. All right. Say hello to Bruno. Say hello, Bruno. Hello. Yeah, hello. You're a good boy. You're a good little Mexican, aren't you? Yes, you are. You hop down. Stinky breath. All right, this is a pain, but bring this up over here. Turn it on. All right. So, we are going to uh, I'm hoping that this is what you can see. Um, so, HD backup. What even is on there? All right. Well, that's nothing. Let's go and get the trusty old crystal disk info, which I'm sure most of you will have heard of. Just basically want to see if it's going to give it a little, a little dingling, uh, or it's going to tell me it's all right, and how old it is. Okay, here we go. Um, what is it, E-Drive? Huh? Oh, that's actually quite young. One gig, oh, one terabyte. That's the same as the, uh, that wolf head over there. All right. 
format that bug, I know I don't need to as such, but I will anyway. Um. Yes. And then all we're going to do is you're going to run a clone uh, on this machine, which does not take long. How fortuitous, I had a one terabyte drive lying around. Come on, whenever you're ready. I suppose it does take a bit longer being, uh, you know, the larger the drive. Go away, Discord. We'll just uh, let that do its thing while we're waiting. I wonder if that uh, is that just because it's given me it's given me a problem. Of course, nothing uh, nothing can be can be uh, completely uh, <sighs> why is quit immediately click cancel. Okay, close. Alright. So, I'm just going to run a clone on it. So, this is the... That's the target drive. Disconnect that. I don't know if you can... I can't get it over in, in the camera. It's a... Uh, it's just one of those cloning docks. Uh, I find them to be quite quite useful uh, grab him um, it's about all I can do until that clone is done it's probably going to take about I don't know 15 minutes so what I might do is I might break it there uh, and then when then, we'll, then I'll come back and um, put it in the machine and then we'll, we'll hook it up and fire it up and we'll have a look and make sure it's all good. So um, for you, this is going to be instantaneous. So I'll see you right now, I guess. And welcome back. Took no time at all, did it? Well, in actual fact, it took quite a while and uh, it's still going. Um, short version is that, that drive that didn't fit uh, turned out to be a good thing because uh, it wouldn't clone. There's a number of corrupt files in there for whatever reason. So I'm manually copying them across, uh, which is taking a fair bit of time because there's a couple hundred gig of stuff. Uh, but the good news is I didn't need it to get the machine up and running because it's, a, um, it's not an operational drive in the sense that it's, it's required. It, it will be the location for the user folders eventually. Um, but it, in the meantime, it's more or less just a scratch disk. Uh, so the machine's plugged in, uh, put back together. Uh, there was nothing else to really show. Uh, put the size back on, happy days, um, network connection, power connection, um, it's already been set up for a remote desktop um, thing, uh, RDP, so uh, it's now sitting down under the desk quite nicely and it was surprisingly light still even with those hard drives in it and I got the boot drive tucked up the top uh, nice and secure, it is just sitting there but that machine ain't going anywhere and um, it's uh, it's all good to go. So I'll just flick over and I'll uh, I'll show you the here it is here. Uh, so these are my like you know some recovery tools over the side there. And if we go in here, we'll see the uh, all the drives there. So there's one more to pop in here to be D drive, which will be workbench when that's done. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty good. The speed uh, did a speed test. Got 930 down at 40 six or something up uh, just been recently well in the last couple of months <coughs> upgraded to a uh, one gigabit fiber connection sorry should we, uh, which is great and um, uh, I would like to see the upload speed a bit quicker but um, yeah what do you do other than that uh, very happy with how it's turned out I would give that case I reckon I reckon I'd give it a well, either a seven or eight out of ten I'll just take a point off for not having the uh, toolless design for the for the cut uh, for the drive holders, and also for just 
having a little bit extra depth would make it more accessible. Um, but I think, I think other than that, so that's two points I'd take off. So I guess out of fairness, um, I guess we could say eight. If I wanted to be really picky, I could say cable management is not brilliant. So that could bring it back down to a seven. Uh, so, you, you know, depending on what you're after, would uh, I, any of those points may affect you. But overall, for a, uh, for a case for a, a media server or a NAS drive or anything that you need a large number of physical drives in, um, you, uh, you can't go wrong with this case. Now, I'll just flick back out of this so you can actually... There we go. Yeah, as I was saying, you, 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 you'll be happy with it if you're looking for a case with a lot of storage for, for actual drives. Um, despite its shortcomings, which aren't, there many, aren't that many of, I will admit, um, given, compare it to what I used to use, which had, um, uh, had five drives in it, and that was full, and that was the Silverstone, again, Silverstone. Are you listening, guys? Um, that was the uh, media... I'm not sure, I can't remember if that was a media server case, or, but it was, it was a horizontal like, um, desktop format so it could fit into the uh, entertainment unit like next to the, the amp or the speaker or whatever. Um, that was a little bit too deep um, for what it was. It used to stick out of the cabin, which annoyed the hell out of me. But it was heavier than this, even though this has got more drives. So they've done well to, to keep it light uh, knowing that there's going to be a lot of drives in there which are going to add to the weight of the machine. Uh, so good job there, Silverstone. Um, maybe just have a think about what I said about the, um, the drive trays. Make them, make them tooler so you can just, you know, click your drive into place. So it makes it truly quick because that would be great. You just open the door, yank it out, click, 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 click. See? Um, but that aside, definitely recommend it. Uh, money well spent uh, and now it's uh, sitting in the office uh, rather than out in the garage where it was getting too hot. So on that note, um, we'll wrap it up. Uh, I know this video has ended up being a little bit long, uh, but some will be longer. Uh, just happens what it is. It depends on the subject matter and what we're doing. Build ones will obviously take longer. Laptop screen replacement, not so long. Rant, depends how angry I am. But um, It'll vary, and the content will, will vary. I'll try and keep it uh, varied, and I'll try and keep it, um, well, I'll try and keep it amusing if I can. Uh, if I think of any jokes, I'll tell them, but um, that's not my forte. But uh, who knows where it will go. But I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, I'll try and answer comments, but um, we'll just see how life goes. So if it's not straight away, hopefully it eventually will be uh, replied to and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until then, this is me, the doc, uh, Scott, um, from Tech Doctor TV, signing off, and farewell from the doggos as well. So until next time, have fun, I guess. Bye.